What up, what up? This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 154. I am your host, Ace Harris. And this is a super special episode. I got, obviously, my co-host... Ace Harris Jr. Ace Harris Sr. Um, <laughs> tell me who you are, bro. <laughs> DJ Mike LV. <laughs> and honestly, we got to pause and just um, give a warm applause to the one and only Raul Garcia. What up, RG, in the building? Man, what's up, bro? How you yes, feeling? Sir, yes, sir. Man, I'm happy to be here. Man, that's what's up. Happy to be here. I um, you know, we go way back. We can, we can, we go. It's, it's been. I've been knowing you for like, dang, six years now. Mm-hmm. Dang, I, I six watched. Years I watched. I watched you grow up. Hey, Scott Free in the building. Yo, what's we were up? just talking about you. We bro. gotta get Scott. Yo, honestly, oh, shoot. y'all can't see it on camera, yeah. but the legendary Scott Free in the building. Up, bro? We gotta get him on. Um, you know what I'm saying on the show. Wow. At one point too. Wow. Hey, no, no, no. I was just telling them the story about when we did ministry over in Marietta, at the apartment complex, and they were like, uh, <laughs> it was like a whole Hispanic community, and you're like, you know the gospel, <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> Yeah, you're like, oh, I need you to go preach to these kids over here. <laughs> bro, had me preaching on the spot, bro. I think it was my first time preaching. I was like 14. But guess I was like, what? Guess what, RG? Kid. It's not your last time, brother. Hey. Amen. Amen. Right. Okay, no, nah, no. Nah. That's, that's, that's some <laughs> shout out. Also, man, I ain't going to lie. You can't see. My wife is in the back. Shout out Naja Harris, the beautiful one and only. Um, baby coming in like three weeks. So y'all pray for Yeah, me. baby on the way. Baby on the way. But back to what up, RG? Y'all, y'all just did the Twitch um, live, so I mean, I feel like y'all was kicking it, but we gotta make sure we unpack some other stuff that y'all didn't get to get to. For sure. Um, tell me how you feeling, like RG, uh, spiritually, mentally, and honestly, physically. How you feel right now, bro? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah, no, I'm good, man. Okay, I'm good. I can't complain. Okay, okay, I can't complain. We got the the music coming out. We right, got a bunch of things lined up. So, I just want to say, complain. yo, he's been going consistent, crazy lately. So, oh nah, yeah, yeah. He finally turned the t- turned the uh, turned the rotors up. Yeah. So I, I think on this man, we can probably this this episode. This is gonna have to be a two part because there's like so much to unpack. But I think it'll be good for some people who've been sleeping under a rock. Yeah. And not rock tapped sleepers. into the one one six culture, the the, the Christian hip hop space, and just yeah. good music. Yeah, yeah. Porn rock sleeper. <laughs> it'll be good to kind of just kind of a little bit of backstory on you know where you from. You know your journeys in music to now and your and your faith. So maybe you could start with just like, you know, where you from, how you got into music, and um and kind of what led to now. Just for the people who should know but don't know, I think it'd just be helpful to give a little little backstory. Yeah, that's cool. Yo, too. shout out Paradox One One Six for the subscribe with the Prime, bro. That's Let's that's go. like mad bread, bro. Oh, we he are, just we dropped are. crazy amount of money right now. Thank my you. bad, I didn't. Uh, even, you gotta uh, acknowledge months. that. <laughs> my bad. I gotta get my Twitch on. But go ahead, go ahead, RG. It's hard. Sorry, yeah. Um, nah, shout out to Paradox 116. Hey. Um, damn, bro, it's funny. It's funny because every time we have like conversations and stuff, it's always about, well, it always starts with like, oh, yeah, you're doing music again. Like, you're actually, <laughs> you're actually hey, you're an back, artist. Man. Oh, shit. No, yeah, I know. Um, how does that make you feel? Like, I don't feel no type of way. Okay. I mean, yeah, it is so. what it is. I was, I was out for so long. It was what, like three years? Yeah. Damn. Um, a hard three years. A tough three years. Tough, right? but that's, that's yeah, better way to yeah. Yeah, for sure. but nah, shoot, we're here. Um, you yeah. met me when I was doing music over at my mom's crib, like yes. every day, like uh, just locked in. But yeah, I'm from north side of Atlanta, Gwinnett County. Gwinnett County in the and, building. Um, that's me too. Yeah, and I just been doing music since I was a kid, and God made a way. For, hey, so you, I mean, honestly, you showed me some of your early music. Which was amazing, cause okay, so we have a we have an artist group chat on the Reach Records roster, and every now and then I would like tease out some of my terrible old beats or songs, and some of the other artists will too. Yeah. But I ain't gonna lie, when R, when I was pulling RG's old stuff, he had, he has a CD he made. He was I think twelve. Man, I, we were all like, bro, you've been dope since you was like eleven. Like it's not fair. Like from the jump, I felt like you just kind of knew what you was doing. Come to music, talk to us about like what what made you kind of grasp like. The craft so well early like what was it about you or what like what was that oh, about i was a when i was a kid i was taking my mom's pots and pans and like playing the drums with it like mm-hmm. i think music has just always been something i gravitated to right and then when i got put onto like you know like hip-hop and rap i was like dang that was dope like this is cool and then i just i don't know i just developed the, the yeah. skill at first i was doing like I was doing cover songs, rapping to everybody else's songs. That's smart though, yeah. Then eventually I, I like I started writing and 
you know, producing and, and doing my cover art and things and started developing all these skills and shoot. That's here dope. We are. Yeah, you I mean you got a like what age did you know like this is what I like mom dad this is like what I want to do. Like, it seemed like it was pretty early like I mean, I don't Bro, know like yeah. yeah, I mean shoot. First time I performed I was like 7 years okay. old. So <laughs> It's like and I didn't want to. I was like so nervous. I was shaking and my dad was like, man, you only have to do it for five minutes. The song yeah. is five minutes. And then once you get off stage, that's it. You don't have to do it again. But I fell in love with it. Like it was just so, it was something about it, man. And then. So you said your dad, yeah. I mean, I don't know what household Mike Hill you grew up in, but like my mom and dad, like what is it about your dad and family that was like pushing you to do music? Cause that's just kind of like, not foreign been, yeah yeah like what is it about man that support is everything everything yeah like my first album they funded it like that was them like my dad working overtime and y'all want like mom, balling mom, mom selling tamales like trying to make it happen like bro like, that's everything i wouldn't be where i'm at without my parents but yeah that's just them pushing me like i thank god that's so dope i'm definitely blessed because my dad you know Mm -hmm. you know traditional hispanic families like they want their kids to to work and do something and i was i was at the crib making beats at like 2 a.m like <laughs> like yo it's gonna work like it's gonna happen and you know here we are how i'm curious later. How, how were you in school like uh, from academic with you yeah like how how was that was, was it like you was like man i just want to graduate and get out of here or were you were yeah i was ready to get out <laughs> of there man i was skipping class to make beats like <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> but um <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now that's 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 amazing, man. <laughs> who, I just, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say who you you talk about um, how you came into hip hop and started listening to hip hop. Who who did you first start listening to that kind of made you fall in love with it? The first album I heard was actually Don Omar. Yeah, like, way back. Yeah, Don Omar, and I was yeah. bro, I was hooked. Like <laughs> I was like, yo, this is crazy. I took the album from my from my uncle's crib, and I was like listening to it like yeah. secretly because it wasn't it wasn't Christian. Oh, and your parents then, uh, your parents didn't approve it. Uh -uh, they went with that, okay. but uh, my mom found it, put me on the later on they put me on the funky and all them, and funky. they were actually dope. Like like yeah. they weren't back then, bro. They were they were spinning so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I got put onto them, and then I don't know, man. That's dope. <laughs> Shout out! I think what something you said I want to call out some is like you having your mom having the opportunity to introduce like some wholesome music that was you actually thought was dope. I wonder how your career or trajectory would have been or where it would have gone if you didn't have those outlets of men in the faith or artists and men or women in the faith making dope hip hop at the time. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, yeah. How 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 important was it for you to hear something of the faith that was like artistically yeah. actually actually good? Now it was everything because it was like a new way to express my faith too. Yeah, like it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't like it, the worship it, music. It, 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 yeah, it wasn't like what I was growing up around. Right. It was like, oh, this is something that's dope, and I enjoy. It. Like I genuinely enjoy. It. So yeah, you know, fast forward to now, I feel like that's why what we do is so important because there's somebody <sighs> out there who. You know, there's a kid out there who's who's trying to find something to identify to and facts. Something that's dope and actually relevant, you know, that's speaking to culture, that's speaking yeah. to, you know, what's what's going on right now. So that's why I'm like locked yeah. in. I mean there's so much we we can we can we can go down memory lane so crazy. I just wanna speed yeah. up a little bit and talk about like um you coming to like getting signed and so I actually met our I started at Reach in June 12, 2017. It's almost six years ago, which is crazy. And before I got here, I have saw What Up RG. On, shout out to Rapzilla. I saw What Up RG on Rapzilla. Like on, I think it was the Don't Forget to Live video. Yeah. And I saw that video and I was like, yo, who is this kid? He's fly. He's compelling. He has a charisma about him that I think is dope. So I already knew I wanted to come to the building with like some options of people we could try to develop. And the first thing I did when I saw Biz, like the second day, I was like, yo, what up with RG? He was like, I'm already tapped in. I was like, so it clicked like, yo, I, I like this kid. And we went and drove to Gwinnett County on like a Tuesday night, like eight o'clock at night. It was probably later. It was dark. It was summer. It was probably like, mm -hmm. nah, it was late. Pulled up to his house, met his mom. And this kid had a studio in his bedroom. <laughs> And he was playing the <laughs> early stages of Pleasant Hill, y'all. And when I tell you, I think it was Yellow Paint, and I heard that track. I looked at Biz like, 
um, yeah, this is this is special. <laughs> and so that moment was like um, memorable for me because I felt like it was a moment I knew that you would be a part of something bigger. You know what I'm saying? So talk to us a little bit about coming to reach, how you feel, and then also maybe get. I know we can we can't go through every project. Maybe bring us there to all the way maybe to New Hollywood in like a two minutes. Two if you minutes. can try to. I know it's a lot, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, no, that was actually a crazy time. And shout out Michael. Michael was in the video with me for Don't oh, Forget I to Live. I didn't know that. Yeah, brother, yeah. tap in. Come on, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, bro. Ace Harris Jr. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, nah, it was, uh, shoot. I remember when, so I, the first time I came to the building was because of Joe, actually. Joe Gonzalez. Oh, Joe Gonzalez, yeah. Yeah, and he hit me and he was like, yo, I'm about to go to this, this Fuse session, like pull up with me. And I pulled up and I was like, yo, I know Fuse since forever ago. Like I've seen him when he was a- uh, Future, Future Kid. Future Kid. <laughs> when he was Future Kid. <laughs> so it was just <laughs> like- oh, That, that name, funny. bro, cause bro, nah, I'll tell you later. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, but um, yeah, that was when I actually met Biz mm -hmm. and then, you know, all everything started lining up. Right. But um, yeah, man, going from Pleasant Hill to where we are now, it's just, it's, it's insane, bro. It's ridiculous, but- um, I think when I think of it, it's just I think uh, it's just growth, a lot of growth. I think you can actually hear your growth from Pleasant Hill to Raul to New Hollywood. Mm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you you mentioned this before. Talk about when you made Pleasant Hill. There was a lot of pressure, to be honest, about the right record, the right release, the right moment. Tell me, talk to like the people why you fought for that type of first um, offering as your first. Mm sign release and how that helped shape the trajectory to like new hollywood yeah you know? i just didn't want to do what everybody else was doing like yeah. from the jump i was like yo i'm gonna i'm gonna come out the gate with something different right. something that's unique and that's that's a accurate expression of who i am not like mm -hmm. what other people want to hear me doing and i think i've carried that along throughout my career like yeah. mm -hmm. new hollywood i fought for that like yeah. i i knew people wanted you know the X Y Z, but I was like, you know what? Like, I'm gonna make something that I love and that I enjoy. That's why I'm so proud of it now. I'm mm. like, I go back and listen. Like, yo, like, I did that. Like, I, I, on one end, like, I, I channeled everything I was going through, and like, mm -hmm. I, you know, I was dealing with things and, and walking through like therapy and like hard conversations and all these things. But on the other side, I fought for like the creative right. and the sound and like what it was gonna feel like and what you know. So. I don't know, man. It's just it's just been something in me from the jump where I I never want to do something that's like that's not me. Like, For I sure, wanna, I want to make something that's authentic to who I am. And shoot, whoever connects with it is gonna connect with it in a yeah. in a deeper way. No, I I think you did that. I mean, honestly, like Pleasant Hill, Raul, Alex got the the color tape. That's crazy. Oh, what's oh that's that's the one. I, that's the one. Yeah, that's I, the one okay. you're talking about. That's yo. That's shout out to Alex from Jersey, who's in our Twitch stream, man. That's insane. Um, day ones in the building only. Yeah, I think there's so much. I mean, I, I, I'm grateful that you fought to develop your own sound and not, you know, uh, feel the temptation to kind of do the obvious. Because I felt like it prepared the way for people to hear, like, yo, Christian rap artists doing Christian music can sound way more diverse and eclectic than it has been. And shout out for you for being brave enough, especially with a big spotlight on you to like fight for like, nah, nah, Ace, nah, Lecrae, nah, Reach, whoever. This is the sound I'm going to do. And I ain't going to lie, looking back at it, New Hollywood is, in my opinion, I may get, I may get canceled or challenged for this, it's probably a top five project in our space, to my, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So... Give it up for what up, RG, for that new Hollywood, yeah, bro. Am I, a, a, any disagreement over there, Michael? How we feeling? Okay, okay. Yeah, a little yeah, bit. He don't like yeah, New Hollywood. Ah, yeah. uh, okay. Let's let's go ahead and cut his mic off, Matt. A <laughs> <laughs> nah, I love New Hollywood. I think top five in the space all time is kind of it's kind of wild. It's a wild statement. I stand by it. All right, so um, I think it's top five. It's top five. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll be dope too. Um, as we kind of like wrap up this segment, is talk about. Before the release of New Hollywood, like people was asking, it was, that process seemed to be like grueling. You know, so I would love to, as as much as you're comfortable getting into it, like walk us through why it took so long from Raul to New Hollywood and what helped you get out of that season. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely stop right here and just tap back in. This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 154. I'm here with DJ Michael V, not Ace Jr. And then I'm here, 
with uh what up RG? Young Holy. Yeah. All right, stay tuned. Let's get it. Welcome back. This is the 116 Life um, on Holy Culture Radio Series Channel 154. I'm your host, Ace Harris. I'm here with some great legends in the building. DJ Mike LV, What Up RG. And we left talking about New Hollywood. I made a very declarative statement, which I'm probably going to get dinged for a little bit. And I, I'm going to be honest, I still got to unpack my you know, rating on every project that I love. So my, my, my this is, take my, it back now. This is take my it opinion, back. but I said that New Hollywood is a top five project in the space. I know some of y'all made degree and we were debating. Michael, tell me what you, your pushback on that. And I want to hear your thoughts, RG. Before we get into like the backstory of New Hollywood, I think this is, we need to kind of land here a little bit. If you want my honest opinion on why I don't think New Hollywood is top five is because it's too early to tell. That's when it was released like not even eight months ago. So for me, it's like time will tell mm-hmm. if it's a classic. I I, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's like, that's like, okay. to me, that's like the same thing as like if Drake drops a song and uh, an album and it's like, yo, and people are like, yo, this is top three Drake. And it's like, come on, bro. You're telling me that it's better than take care, views, all the, you got to give it time because time is going to tell. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and I'm, so what I'm not saying is that it's not a good album. It's not great. I'm not right. saying any of that. I'm saying it's a great album, great production, great features, great world building, great growth from all artists, great step up. Like, it's, it's, it's great. It's just time. I think for me, time is what tells mm. what's a classic. Okay. Because it's like, do you, are you going to feel like this 10 years from now? You don't know yet. I'm just, Artie's I'm, like, yes. Because <laughs> I know I feel like that right now. Like, I, you know, but what, what I'm saying is, is like, you, okay. you, this is time. This is, that's a good pushback. And it's so hard to compare because people consume music differently now than they did during the era of like Anomaly Uncomfortable. So 100%. I think we, we, we don't sit with albums as long as we used to anymore. Yeah. And so in the time we sat with New Hollywood, it, it's like, oh, this is, you know, it's one of those things that felt instantly well-crafted. I think I say, I say the word well-crafted a, a lot. And I want, me as a producer, A&R, you can jump in here, RG. When I say well-crafted, I'm talking about production songwriting yeah substance and content uh arrangement think, sequencing narrative those things make a classic body of work now the one aspect you can put is like having all that and then having like critical mass commercial impact which is i, I feel those people who have that pushback as like you can have all that but did it you know do this but yeah. that's my yeah what you, what you, what, you, what you thought man like why? Why is it top five? Why is it? Why is it top five? Oh, for me? What, what are some of your favorite? If you want to say top five, you can. If not, what are some of your favorite projects that you felt would live in that same yeah. kind of like? I can't say top five because I'm definitely gonna forget some. But okay, that's, um, that's a better way to better way to save yourself. I I, I feel it. Yeah, no, nah, because yeah, I, was, from me, I was trying to right now. And I, yeah, <laughs> I get it. But um, I think it's top five reach for for sure. I'll die on that hill. I will die on that hill. You 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 you'll die there. Yeah. Crucified? Nah, you wildin'. <laughs> this crazy. guy's wildin', bro. <laughs> okay, That's go crazy. ahead. Um, um, yeah, I don't think there's no like right or wrong way to look at. It. I feel like everybody has their own like yeah. taste. And, what like, are some projects that you feel like would live up to like one of your one of the best? You got. I mean, we're not yeah, here to leave anybody I, out. I think but, like, Anomaly's crazy. Anomaly. Okay. Anomaly's crazy. Um, Uncomfortable's crazy. Comfortable. Rise. Um, Rise is on everybody's list. Personally, we'll go. Yeah, it's incredible. Incredible. It's incredible. Um. But yeah, no, it's it's tough, bro. Cause I I wasn't trying to make like a like when I did New Hollywood, it wasn't like I was focused in the sense that I would I just wanted to make a great project for me, you know, that I enjoy. Right. Um, and I think that's why it's top five to me because I I was locked in on tapping into every soundscape that I wanted to, mm. every idea that I thought was great, I pursued it until right. it was until it was what I heard in my head. Um, but there's also no like reference point for New Hollywood for other people. Sure, yeah. sure, so, like, sure. So like, okay, I think New Hollywood might just be the reference point for other people, other creatives, and newer artists gotcha. who like are inspired by it. You know, they can be like, oh yeah, like I've heard something like this before now. Whereas before New Hollywood, like it wasn't, it wasn't too good. many people tapping into those soundscapes and those sounds. And, That's a good way to look. I mean, so Michael V said something on the break that I think kind of gives me a little foundation for not debate of whether it's the best, but what this project was. And he said, new Hollywood created a world that you walked into. Yeah. And I feel like musically, thematically, that's what I felt. And that's why maybe I'm saying it's one of my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's the first, you also the, live the first of our kind. 
That's true. You heard a lot of New Hollywood. That's true. Because New Hollywood was done like in the 2022. That's true. We did. We did. Um, but you started. No, in the 2021. Okay. Yeah, 20. I say 2019, 2022. Right. But, yeah, but it, it was a war. I mean, let's unpack. I think we gotta. We gotta. We can't gloss over New Hollywood. I think it's a lot more questions. I want to ask you about it. I think it's the first album of its kind to do that within our space. To actually really intentionally world build and have all these themes that you're talking about when it comes to sequencing, writing, production, the thematics. Like sure. It, ha- it checks all the boxes of having anthems, having deep cuts, having transitions, having all these out- outros, intros that lead into each other, having all these things. I think it's 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 I I think it's one of one of the first complete albums in our space when it comes to world building specifically and creativity and having that creative freedom and not following a trend. You know what I'm saying? Mm, like, and I, I wouldn't that. even say- I feel that. And I wouldn't even say in our space. I, I feel like, for me, that's like disrespectful to New Hollywood. Because I feel like it's so good that it can't just live in our space. Like it can't, I can't, I can't say all those things and be like, yeah, it's cool for like this. It's like, nah, I think it's, it's great across the board. That's good. Mm. I want to call I want to call some of that out some and talk about the sonics but also the narrative. It seems to tell us about what was the narrative behind and why it took you 3 years to make it. Yeah. What what was the overarching like theme on, on yeah. this project? It's new Hollywood and the you know the the phrase we open it up with is you don't have to act here. So it's just this this idea that you don't have to pretend like you got it all together. You mm-hmm. don't got to act like, you know, you don't have things you're wrestling with and, and struggling through. And it took so long because I was genuinely, like, mm-hmm. having these conversations and dealing with it, mm-hmm. and dealing with things, like, head on. Like, you know, if we're going to dive right into it. Like, yeah, yeah I was, I was like, drinking heavy. I yeah. was, I, I was smoking heavy. I was trying to find all these different things to, to uh, fill this, this board. And, yeah. and, you know, like. I don't know. I was I was looking for things outside of what I knew was true. Uh-huh. Yeah, and that's what New Hollywood is it's like. Coming back to to where you know, actually realizing that this whole time God has been pursuing me. Like mm. I was I was dealing with shame and guilt and mm. like I'm all unashamed and like mm. I'm I'm going back to my bunk. Like damn, bro, I don't deserve to be here. Like like what am I doing here? And it's like it's like realizing like this whole time like god has been pursuing me and like who i am as a child of god hasn't changed because of you know what i'm going through or what i've fact yeah man. like what i'm running to it's like nah he's still running after me and mm. so that's that's what you know it turned out to be but i didn't know it was going to be all that when i started you know like when i started i just had this concept this idea and like i think god was working on my heart as I was working on the album, mm-hmm. and it turned out to be what what it I is. I think you, you you can you can hear that throughout the whole album. I think that I think that's what makes it great. Because I think that outside of me knowing you personally, that people can sense that in the music, mm. and I think that's a great thing that you're able to communicate that because not many people can have that creativity mixed with real emotion and reach the audience and touch them emotionally with the music. And I feel like you were able to do that in a very like beautiful way that wasn't compromising to your art. Absolutely. Mm. And what? So you said God was working on my heart while I was working on the music. Where your mental state? What like uh? How how hard was it, RG, to to go through that and feel the pressures of life and try to deliver a, a project and deal with the wrestles of being a young Christian? How hard was that for you, bro? Bro. <laughs> Yo, remember when you came through the crib one day, like yeah. middle note, like <laughs> randomly just came through middle of the day yeah. with food and was like, "Yo, how you doing, man? <laughs> how are you?" Because I was checked out, bro. Like mm. I was checked out. I was, mm. I was wrestling, man. But I think it was just the people around me, the people I had around me who were like, who helped me get through that. You know, Fast. like having. Having you checking on me, having Cassie like yeah, shout out encouraging Cassie. me, shout I ha- out. having my little brother and like my friends, like yeah. people who had I had around me who were like, yo, like nah, yeah. like like Ty, Ty was shout in the trenches Ty. with me. Oh like, yeah, Ty was in the trench, pulling up to the crib, just playing FIFA and like just like just living life with me, and it 
you know, it, it pushed me to, you know, keep going. But yeah, I, I, I can't say it was something I did on my own because like mm -hmm. it was really just God and the people around me, like, yeah, like pushing me forward. Like that's what sustained me. And, yeah. you know, now I'm like in a place where I'm like, yo, like it's time. Like, I, like, you know, I, I've, I processed that. I went through all that and now it's like, all right, like we got to get to it because, Love it. you know, God brought me too far for me to like just stay stagnant you know for sure yeah. and, and one line on MySpace MySpace is one of my favorite songs on New Hollywood this is why so RG's talking about a. you mentioned it I just want to give a little context for it so this is like 2020 pandemic time uh, you know show money has dried I mean artists went through a real shoot our artists and artists in general people anybody in the, in the, in the gig economy mm -hmm. it was it was real yeah, it bro it was real rough, mm -hmm. it was rough. We, we, we transparently were helping we offered help to the artists in a way just to give them some you know some some financial mm -hmm. support it was rough and yeah, then bro. add that with like going through like a actual depression and <laughs> trying to make the best music of your life add that with <laughs> depression anxiety and an album deadline <laughs> that got pushed back multiple times so rg was kind of non-responsive at the time like <laughs> he was, i mean he was just we could tell he was going through that and i lecrae we, we just i just Shoot, i was like Cray pulled up on me too he did mm-hmm like, and I just felt the Lord like, yo, let's just go pull up. Let me go get his, his favorite food. I'm just going to drive to Gwinnett with his food and just call him when I get like 10 minutes away, see where he's at. Like, yo, I'm, I'm pulling up on you. And I, and I pulled up on you just to see you and just kind of, I was really concerned about you, little bro. And then fast forward to where you are now. That's why this, there's a lyric on MySpace I want you to talk about. You said, label on the line, trying to keep up with investments. Like. I had to get back up and tell myself that I've been destined. Woo! Yeah. When I hear that song. I almost jump out of my chair on some like, I seen where you were at mm. and I heard the music you made. So I'm rejoicing in the Lord for what God has brought you through. It's not just a mm. hype song for me. It's like, it's a testimony, like fight song. Like, yo, my God saved my, 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 my little bro and brought him out of, out of an actual clinical depression. Mm. And now yeah. he's making the best music of his life. Like glory to God. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah. so that's when I hear those lyrics, I'm like, nah, this ain't just a jam, bro. This is a testimony. Yeah. Um, see, so anyway, I get excited talking about that, but I know, I know you want to say something too about that. I mean, nah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nah. I mean, yeah. I I, I don't know. We're talking about the song, but that that time was uh yeah was rough. Yeah, that that whole yeah. As a as a friend, it was a it was tough to watch, you know, because mm. I think in that time it was you. You would try to be there as much as you could, but it's like you, you can't because he's not gonna let you in. You know what I'm saying? There was only a few people that yeah. were kind of allowed in that in that mental space of recovery and recovery. You know real what I'm saying? Word. And just like real, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of like I'm here, but I'm gonna stand over there. You know what I'm saying? Like if you need me, I'm here. Mm. But yeah, it was dope. So I, I have a cool question. Well, not a, not like a but just. I want to. Can you speak to the lyrics on the Hollywood record, the, the last track, and how those lyrics helped revive where you are now and got you through, like, um, like some of the, like some of the, some of the, some of the, the meaning behind that record. Can you just talk to about yeah. how important were those lyrics in terms of like helping you get out of your storm and propelling you for where you are now? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> that record there too. I'm home again. Yeah. I'm home again. It's just. It's just coming back to the father that's what it is and and realizing like i said i feel like i'm repeating myself but yeah realizing he he's been running after me like after every time i i stumble and fall like you calling me back you're always calling me back mm. and yeah that's what hollywood is and i think i don't know bro like i i get choked up because it's like mm. man that's just the love of god bro it's the love of we God. We cut that record that, right yeah. here with them choirs, remember? Yeah. Yup. Yup, the choir was in here. And then we had, uh, you know, Hobie was tracking the the vocals, like, the day before the album had to get turned in. Like, um, mm. Chad tracked the uh, tracked that for me, too. Mm. Like, bro, it was, that whole song yeah. came together so so beautifully. But, yeah. That's, yeah, like, man, one of my favorites on the project. It's great. And I, I think that's, like, a theme for your music, period. I feel like that's been consistently in all your albums, bro, that me. main theme of, like, yo, like, no matter how far you stray, like, God's always going to pull you back. God's always going to mm -hmm. be here with you. And, and, and I feel like that's, like, you're always saying, like, I'm a prime example of that. Like, yeah. I love yeah. I love watching that. This yeah. is, I'm having a good time with y'all. It's a beautiful combo of, like, 
faith, music, culture, art, and redemption, recovery, and mm. how all these things intertwine to help people see the glory of God in a way that you're probably not going to get on a Sunday service or at a traditional church setting. You know what I'm saying? That's, what, that's why it's important. The his hip hop culture that you know we all labor for is so important. So we can get into that more about not exactly what you got through, but also where you are now on the next on the next segment. But I want to take a break. This is the one one six life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel one five four. I am your host Ace Harris. This is my man DJ Mike LV. and my man Young Holy in the cut. Yeah, we'll be right back, y'all. After this, welcome back, welcome back. This is the one one six life on Holy Culture Radio, um, Sirius Channel one five four. I am your host Ace Harris with. DJ Mike LV. And the incredible, legendary... Young what in the cut? What, 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 <laughs> what? Hey. So we just kind of talked about the journey of New Hollywood, the 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 tension that, it, that you had to go through to get here, to make that project, to get it out, and probably hearing people like Mike LV, Ace, Lecrae being like, yo, RG, you got to be more consistent, bro. I don't know how many times we... You probably heard that word from us like a million times. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's right up there with content <laughs> <laughs> yo it's a fact i mean i know as an artist how does that feel hearing oh what, content well both of those things like <laughs> how did you honestly how did you how did yo, it feel hearing? huh how did it feel like is it annoying hearing that over and over no nah, it's not annoying because okay. I, I we were just talking about this yeah um it's not annoying because that's just that's just y'all's job and that's like the name of the game now like content is everything consistency is everything I think for me it's more so like doing content for the sake of content or okay. doing or being intentional that. with it. And for me, I I just want to be intentional with what I sure. do. Like I feel like everything I do is is like intentional. Like yeah. so, yeah. Now it's not annoying. It's just it's just yeah. funny because I'm probably, like, probably, man, I know I, we, we probably heard we were literally on this boy. You too. I know. I know you was on. You was on that. You got to be more consistent, bro. Got to have some content. Yeah, I'm like, man, I'm. <laughs> I, I I think I just for me and this is not this is not just to RG this is like to Andy and and artists alike that are like that I feel like that when you say like that can you okay. I'm about to yeah okay that are that are like uh yo I'm gonna do what I do and then I'm gonna duck off and then I'm gonna come back when I want and then I'm gonna duck off and it's like none of none of none of us are in a place with the fan base to like just duck off and like disappear off the face of the earth and then what i mean by that is is like that whole like kanye like mysterious like i don't do this thing doesn't work for smaller artists like if you don't have like an established like crazy fan base mm -hmm. and you just duck off and like you don't like or you don't do the content or if you do content it's like i'll just do this this one thing like and the, and it's like that's cool, but it's like I, I gave RG an example. I was like, do you want to take two really good high percentage shots that might go in or take 10 really good shots and make six out of the 10? You know what I'm saying? Like it's like it's good. Cause it's just like an adjustment to what where we're at because you can still be intentional with creating moments and creating a narrative and creating a world and having high quality content and still do it in mass and not sacrifice anything as opposed to just doing like a few things or maybe one or two things and yeah. like that's it. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like a lot of artists suffer from that that whole like, nah, yo, like they'll get it and it's like, yo, you're gonna get left behind. And what I and that and what I mean by that statement is like mm. The people that are your fans, they're growing up. It's like they're they're young and they're growing up. So if you disappear for two or three years, those are like formative years of their life that they don't have new music from you. That's fair. And That's they fair. can phase out of you and they can like grow out of you. And they can be like like you as opposed to when if they're fans with you fans of you when they're young and you're consistent, they're gonna keep listening to you as opposed to they're fans of you when they're young and then you disappear and it's like Oh, well, I mean, he was cool when I was this age, but I grew out of that now. That's fair. You know what That's I'm saying? RG's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, man, no, shut no. your... <laughs> no, okay. I want to say that, shout out to you, because you've been... Cons 100%. In terms of content, consistency, and coming out of the, the, uh, the, the, the season of New Hollywood that you went through mentally, spiritually, bro, you've been killing it. T so talk to us where you are now. Like, what's the inspiration behind being consistent, behind making God... Like, let's talk about God made a way. Like, what... How that song came together, 
and how, yeah, and and how important is it to your journey right now? Like, yeah, uh, shoot. Well, to what Michael's okay. talking about, I feel like <sighs> pushback. Right. It's not necessarily pushback because I I get where you're coming from. Yeah. And I, I think it's yeah you're right but on the other side of it like i feel like it's not just a branding thing for people to like duck off and like yeah and you know yeah take breaks because we yeah. all we're human at the end of the day like we're not like these computers like <laughs> generating content and like mm. you know setting up setting up a uh i don't want to set up my phone when i'm like recording like i'm yeah i'm chilling and i'm i'm like I'm locked in making songs, you know? Um, That's good. And, like, when it comes to, like, you know, taking extended periods of, you know, extended breaks for um, for some time, it's like, man, some of us, like, for me personally, I was going through stuff, man. Like, yeah. I know I got friends who, like, have taken breaks, and they're, like, trying to live. And I feel like we're it's just nowadays it's like, yo, post post create do this and it's like man like nobody's living anymore nobody has like real life experiences and stories to tell because everything is about just generating content and generating like uh yeah like like it's all about product rather than like living like nobody's living and it's and it's you could tell because the music just sounds uninspired and like the content just looks like everybody else and like it's silly like people look silly right now like mm. most most i feel like a lot of artists just look funny right now because they're just i feel like everybody's fighting for attention and fighting to beat the algorithm catch the algorithm and do all this stuff and it's like bro like don't forget to live like yeah. don't forget to live and like i don't know man nah. but 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 I, I can't say nothing to that i'm, I'm just that's I'm just, what i'm just soaking in what you're saying <laughs> Um, As someone who preaches content and consistency, I'm just like, that's that's the other side of the conversation. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. But to yeah, God made a way conversation, bro. That jump was <laughs> that song was just fun. Like, I just did it in like 30 minutes. You walked in when I recorded it, and you were like, "Yo, this is crazy." And then uh, Cray walks in, and he's like, "Yo, like this is insane." He's like, "Man, you got to work on your pride." I was like, "Bro, what?" <laughs> <laughs> he said work on your pride. Yeah, he said, man, you gotta work on your pride because you're too talented, man. You're too talented. <laughs> but like, bro, it was like a 30 minute song and it, it I didn't expect it to do what it does, but I'm just grateful that, you know, I'm able to take these breaks and have like a, a being a in a building like Reach where like I have a team of people who are helping me, you know, put this rollout together and like push the song. So I Man, I'm yeah. I, I'm just happy to be here. Could could you have made that? Do you, do you feel like that song was made like you were in the right space, headspace to make something like that? You said you were having fun and just creating like yeah. What? I think just after New Hollywood, I wasn't. I'm not like New Hollywood was such a focused vision that I had. Mm -hmm. After after New Hollywood, I just been making like you just like I'm fun. just Pops. having fun with it. Like <laughs> yeah. yeah, like <laughs> Bendicion was just fun. Like I sent it to Michael when I recorded it. Yeah. Was, that, was that made for Bodega? By, by chance, I'm just curious. Was that? Nah, nah I just we, had that beat. Yeah. yeah, I just had that beat. Okay. It was in the same time notes. frame though. It okay. wasn't. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Because uh, sonically, I felt it like was, it could have. Yeah. I sent it before Bodega came out though, right? Nah, I was like right, like right when we were working on it. No, no. but uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> Yo, yo, RG's a savage, bro. I love yeah. this kid. What you mean? <laughs> he's like, well, nah, I disagree. But, um, <laughs> but okay, talk to us about that song and you rapping in Spanish. Like, you, cause you said this to me before. Like, yo, man, actually, like, I wish I'm. It sounds ignorant me saying it. Like, yo, the Ace, like, English is my second language. Like, I rap better in Spanish. You, you said that to me, I think, before, yeah. and I was like, oh, I mean, like, duh. Like, talk about how. Rapping in your, you know, what I'm saying Spanish is, just flows naturally for you. And do you, are you, do you want to do more of that? Yeah, it's just, I mean, shoot, it's just fun to me. It's fun to me. I think I didn't do it sooner just because I don't know. I, I didn't know how to express like the things I was going through to. Yeah. Yeah. So really, my parents are like the foundation of everything, and I, I just didn't know how to. Now that I'm like having these conversations and stuff, I'm like, man. And also, I never want to make music like for the sake of uh, what we were talking about, like for the sake of making music or I, I have to you. do the XYZ type song I and you. I have to 
oh, that's what's working. Let me do that. I'm that like, sense. man, I want to do something that's like real to where I'm at right now. And Bendicion was that. Like, I was just like, man, like, I feel like rapping. Like, let me just you rap. Slid, yeah. Bro. yeah. And that's what God, God made a way was too. It was just like, man, I had the cadence. Like, yo, let's, yeah. let's get it. But yeah. No, don't, yeah I, 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 love, I love that, RG. Right, so talk to us a little bit about, um, like, even outside of the music, what else are you putting your hands to? I, I see you, you mentioned in the first a couple um, conversations ago about, like, you do art. Like, talk to us about how you're, like, expressing yourself creatively, not just in the music right now, other things you're putting your hands mm -hmm. to. Free Sundays. Hey, talk, what's that? Give the, people, give the people a little, a little sneak peek. Yeah, nah, so I've been, I've been doing design and, like, video stuff before I was really locked in on the music. Right. Um, like I was doing design for designs for church and stuff like on, <laughs> on, on like word and all that stuff. So, um, you know, throughout the years, I just developed the the craft and been helping my friends along the way. I designed a lot of, I, I designed some early stuff for Dill. Okay. Um, shoot, just everybody. I designed Ty's cover. I just which did, which which, which cover was it? Um, the, the latest the, project. No, no, the one before that. Okay. The, Divine Storm. Oh, you did do that. Oh, that's hard. Uh -huh. I didn't yeah, know that. That's that, fine. Uh, I, I, that, did, I love that cover. But go ahead, yeah. Yeah, I just did Hobie's Tor Tor Flyer. It's just something that like no, I, you, you didn't just do it. You saved. What saved happened? It. You saved it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's just something that I I enjoy and it's yeah. fun to me. So yeah, I just been helping my friends out, and now I'm like slowly launching, you know, free Sundays to you know help other people. I want to like help develop people's brands and ideas and and just create you know the best art and content that we can it's like content but yeah create the best <laughs> every the best time Artie says possible. content he gets he gets like a little <laughs> a little uh, pain point just pops up in his brain like bro mm -hmm. um so but so so basically free sundays like you want to like is that something long term where you feel like you can see yourself not making music as much or is that just an addition to your world of, of expressing yourself yeah. creatively yeah i don't know what what the future is going to look like but yeah it's just another expression another way for me to be creative and, you know, help the people around me. So, For sure. Yeah. Super dope. Well, shoot, man, I feel like, man, we kind of got a, got a good, you know, conversation going, man. There's so much, just to see where you're at, I'm, I'm super proud of you, man. And I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to share with the people, what you got coming up, uh, things they got going on right now. Um, but I feel like, yeah, a lot, a lot has been said, you know. Yeah. Now we got Heaven on Earth on the way. We got a lot of dope stuff on the way. Um, but yeah, now nah, everybody who's been rocking with me, man, I just want to say thank you. Like, thank mm. you, thank you, thank you for your patience and for, you know, I saw somebody defend me on TikTok. They were like, uh, they're like, yo, I know, I know this post isn't getting a lot of love, but um, yo, like you got loyal fans who rock with you and we're here with you and we support you. And I, that, that means the world to me because I mean, that's what I do it for. for that's the, amazing. For, for my fans and the people yeah. who support me, like. I don't care what what's going out, you know, what's sure. going on around me, yeah. like who's doing what. It's like, man, I the people who support me, that's what matters the most to me. And I'm I'm grateful for y'all. So, so I, I, appreciate I, I, it. I have a just just I'm just curious, like, do you see yourself like touring, doing it? I know you had the um Saint Holy Tour. Saint is that Holy something Tour. is that something you want to do like Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. For sure. It's in the works. Oh, it's in the works. Okay. Fire. Mm -hmm. Keep us posted, man. You got any thoughts, Michael? Chill. Man, I, I just appreciate you, man, RG. So um, I feel like your new music that I've heard, the new stuff, crazy fire. Can't say much, but appreciate you, man. So it's just, it's just it, we just, we just seeing where you are now for what you've been through has been a blessing, man. And uh, it's only more to come. So that's it, y'all. This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 154. I'm Ace Harris. And I'm DJ Mike LV. What a bar, G. And uh, this is the 116 Life. See y'all next time. Let's get it.